Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the online lesson for semester three, lesson one, grade five. So take a look at the screen. You can see there are some mysterious animals swimming. Can you guess what they are? If you look carefully, you'll see certain parts of these animals that are a bit of a giveaway, particularly this trunk. And yes, they're elephants. Our lesson today is about elephants. We'll start with a little bit of a review, though. In the past, we've learned that stories that seem real are called, and real is the key word. That's right, realistic fiction. We know that fables are, what are fables? Are they stories, fiction or nonfiction? Yes, they're stories. Short stories, which have a moral and feature animals that act like humans, which we said was personification. The purpose of fables is to, is it one or two purposes? It's two, in fact, to entertain and teach. We found out that the most important idea in a piece of writing is called, I think you know the main idea, and we've learned that supporting details are, you know, details from grade four, little bits of information that support the main idea. We also know that the general area that you live in is called your neighborhood. Okay. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about how to find and learn about the most important ideas in a passage that's about elephants. In so doing, we will learn how to retell the most important parts of a piece of writing. So what would that be called? If you retell a piece of writing, a story or an article, it's a summarize, it's, a, it's summarizing or it's a summary. With summaries, you can kind of remember They've got, there's a, a handy uh, memory tool, the SUM in summarize can stand for shorter than the text, use your own words and main ideas only. Of course, there will be more to summaries than that, and we'll discuss that later on. Today, we're reading a nonfiction selection about elephants. It's from this book called Safari by Robert Bateman. Robert Bateman is quite a famous, at least in Canada, uh, artist uh, who paints pictures about uh, pictures of wildlife animals that are known for their detail. So they look so realistic that people may even mistake them for photographs. Here's the uh, cover leaf from the inside front cover of the book. It gives a little bit of background about Robert Bateman and how this book came to be. So here is a little bit about reading nonfiction. So this will also help you in your guiding notes to, to complete page one. That's not page one. Yeah, it is the top of page one. So on page one of your guiding notes, you'll be filling in some blanks and uh, the answers can be found in this part here. Nonfiction is writing about the real world. Some nonfiction tells true stories about people or events. Other nonfiction gives facts about a subject. By reading nonfiction, you can learn about people, places, and events from all over the world. We'll stop there and go on. Uh, this is the top of the next page, 92. When you read nonfiction, one goal is to understand and remember the most important ideas. One way to do this is to summarize, which means to tell the main ideas in your own words. And quite often, even as you get up into university levels, Teachers or professors will ask you to summarize articles they want you to read, not because 
they need the summary for themselves, but because they understand that when you summarize something, you really need to understand it to, in order to pick out the most important ideas and to change them into your own words. You have to really quite understand it very well. So let's brainstorm a little bit about elephants. What do you know about elephants? You read an article about elephants in grade four, and I'm sure you remember things like the, the names of their body parts, like this, this part, or these big teeth are called tusks, right? Um, you probably remember that there's more than one kind of elephant in the world. How many kinds of elephants? I think there's two main kinds of elephants, African elephants and Asian elephants. Okay probably also know that they have hair. You can't see much of it, but they do have hair and they give birth to babies that are a live birth, it's called, and they feed their babies milk. So what do you call animals that do this? Animals like us, animals like cats and dogs are called mammals. Okay. You can watch this video. We're not going to watch it here in this lesson, but it's on the website. So please do go ahead and take the time to watch this uh, introductory video about African elephants. Okay. So again, in your guiding notes, the bottom of page one asks you to label the, these uh, uh, parts of an elephant. Okay. So these are anagrams. An anagram is, is when you take a, a word and you mix up the letters to make some new word or uh, maybe it's not a word that you recognize. It's like a word puzzle. Okay, so the first one, T-R-K-N-U. What would that be? What part of an elephant would that be? If I told you that it's what we call the elongated nose of an elephant, then you might know it's this part, which is called a trunk. Okay, then the next word, number two, this is what we call a baby elephant. It's the same word that we use for baby cows. Does anybody know what that is? Yes, it is a calf. And calf is a an interesting word to look at. Does anybody know, or can you think of, the plural form of calf? Is it calves? You probably might remember that when you pluralize a word like this that ends in an F, you change the F to a V. So the plural form is calves, C-A-L-V-E-S. Okay, the next one, chatmos. Almost, that sounds like, a, like it could be a real word. It sounds like a place in Greece to me. But this refers to where you put your food. Where do you put your food? When you eat your food, where does it go? It goes down to your stomach. Okay, the next one on our PowerPoint is going to be, I think we jump over here to era. Now, this is the part of the elephant that's big and floppy and it uses them to cool itself down. What's that? It's the ear. The next one is going to be the very hind end of the elephant, something that it switches around, probably when flies are bothering it, uses this part of its body as a fly swatter. That would, oh, creases and wrinkles. This would be the tail. I was just talking about tail. So I got the order wrong here. So creases and wrinkles. Creases are like folds and wrinkles are like when people get older, especially on their forehead, and they get wrinkles in their skin. Okay, so let's have a read. This is, uh, as I said, from the book called Safari by Robert Bateman, Elephant, which is the first chapter of the book, by the way. Elephants like to forage in forests where they can eat juicy young leaves and twigs from the treetops. You can hear them breaking off branches and munching. You can even hear the rumbling of their stomachs. Rumble, rumble, rumble. 
Okay, a few questions for you. Can you find a word that means looking or searching for food? So it'd be in the first sentence. Elephants like to forage in forests where they can eat juicy young leaves and twigs from the treetops. So which verb here do you think could mean eat? You can write these answers down, get a piece of paper, all right? You can pause this video, go get yourself a piece of paper and a pen and see and test yourself. Later on, we'll be able to check, you can check your own work. Question two, find a more interesting word for eating. So this is a word that's being used to mean eating. You can hear them breaking off branches and munching. You'll find it in that sentence. It's a kind of a sound word. How do we know when elephants are hungry? Just like people, you can hear a sound. So it's a word from the last sentence. Because elephants are the largest land animals, they need to eat constantly. So an elephant herd is always on the move looking for its next meal. A herd can travel as far as 40 miles or 64 kilometers in one night. Wow, that's a lot of traveling. Find a word that means a group of elephants. It could also be used to mean a group of cows. No wonder elephants love to stop and cool down when they find water in the heat of an African afternoon. One of the best places to look for elephants is at a watering hole or a river. On which continent do the elephants in this selection live? A continent is a very large piece of land. There are seven continents on the planet. Here we have some, some background information given in, a, in chart form. The habitat of elephants includes forests, grasslands, and river valleys. They're up to 14 feet or four meters in height and weigh between 7,000 and 3,500 pounds, which in the metric system is 3,000 to 6,250 kilograms. They prefer a diet of vegetation, including fruit, leaves, bark, and grass and they range, which is where they like to live, between Southern, Central, and Eastern Africa. Here are some questions. Which word tells us that they eat plants? Can you find a word there that refers to plants or plant matter? So obviously it's in the food section. Which word tells us that they eat part of a tree? And it's not, woof. The leader of an elephant herd is always the oldest female known as the matriarch. She remembers where the deepest water holes are and knows the best places to find food. Find a word that means female leader. So the leader of an elephant herd is always the oldest female known as the matriarch. There we go. It's pretty obvious. Please notice that the CH sounds like a K in this word. Matriarch, not matriarch, matriarch. The face of one of these wise old female elephants makes me think of a map. The creases and wrinkles are like the mountains and rivers. The flat places are the wide plains. Which two words tell us that the female elephant looks old? So this would, these, would, these are two words that describe her face, the face of an older animal or person. Young male elephants do not live with the females and calves. And here we have the, the plural form of calf. Instead, they roam together in small groups. Sometimes they test their strength by fighting with each other. Find a verb that means to go places without having a plan. And it, 
and it, the sound of the word is is the same as the sound of the capital city of Italy. Well, here are your answers, so you can self-check. Forage, munching, rumbling, herd, Africa, vegetation, bark. Bark here is the outer skin of a tree. I think um, xu pei, it's in, called in Chinese. Matriarch, creases and wrinkles, and roam. To roam, amount, to roam around means to to travel around without a particular destination. Okay, so here's another little challenge for you. I want you to open your open your day book and open it up to page 92 and 93, and you'll you'll find there are six paragraphs and there's a chart as well, but six paragraphs of text. And what I want you to do is try to write down the main idea from each paragraph. So I'll give you a, you can pause the video while you do that. Please do it. Don't just go on and look at the answers. So try and, and get the main ideas yourself first before you check your work. So here are the answers. First paragraph, elephants like to forage in forests. Second paragraph, the herd is always on the move. Third paragraph, elephants love to stop and cool down. Fourth, the oldest female leads the herd. The fifth paragraph, the matriarch has a very distinguished face. And the sixth paragraph, young male elephants do not live with their families. Now, use your judgment when you check your work because you won't necessarily have the same words as those that are written down, but you should have uh, a similar meaning. Okay, so on the bottom of page two in your guiding notes, you'll have uh, an exercise that looks something like this. And it asks you to write down, I want you to write down in point form, not in sentences, just in point form, the most important ideas that cover these categories, including eating habits, where they live, so where they live might include the kind of countryside they live in and the parts of the world that they live in, or the part of the continent of Africa they live in. Size will include height and weight. For leader of the herd, I want you to think about uh, who the leader is and what the leader does, what their responsibilities are. And for male elephants, uh, where they live, um, who they live with or who they don't live with, and what they do. Pause the video. Give yourself a chance to think about that and search out those points and write them down. And then you can check. Again, your answers may be worded differently but should basically include all of these ideas. So for eating habits, they constantly eat. They eat vegetation. They eat juicy young leaves and twigs from the treetops, and they also eat grass and fruit. They live in southern, central, and eastern Africa. And the kind of place they like to live in are forests. The habitat is forests, grasslands, and river valleys. For size, you've got that they're the largest land animals, they, their, their weight, and their height. The leader is the oldest female. She's called a matriarch, and she remembers where to find food and, and drink. And the young male elephants roam around by themselves, and they sometimes fight together. Okay, next thing you're gonna be doing in your guiding notes is writing a short version of this, which is called a summary. Remember when you're writing a summary, some key and very important things, you must use your own words. This is challenging, 
there's a, always a temptation to use the words that are in the article. You can use some, there are some words you won't be able to change, but you can change the order and the way they're structured in the sentence. And quite often you can find synonyms. You can use a thesaurus if you have to, to find different words or different ways to express the same idea. Include all the most important points that we had on the previous uh, uh, page of this PowerPoint. And don't add in new ideas. In a summary, you're not saying whether you like the article or not. That's a different kind of writing. That would be like a review. But this is not. It's simply a summary. You're only giving the ideas that are in the article in a simple form, a simple short form. Not saying, and you're not doing any extra research. You're not adding in new ideas. You're not saying, oh, I love elephants or elephants are cute. Nothing like that. Just the main points from the article itself. You can start your summary with a sentence like this. This is a summary of a chapter in a book by Robert Bateman called Safari, and it's all about African elephants. Then you'll go on to uh, include all those important main ideas that we've already talked about. The reason that you would start with a sentence like this is you want your reader to know that the ideas in your writing, in your summary, are not your own ideas. The ideas are Robert Bateman's ideas, and they come from a particular piece of writing by him. Okay, today's lesson was basically about summarizing, and also it was about elephants. So you probably learned a lot about elephants, and hopefully that was fun. But the main things you should have learned um, was how to pick out the most important ideas and how to put them together into a summary, what a summary should include and what it shouldn't include. And that's about it. So thank you very much. We're, we'll end on that note.